These are control mechanisms from the boiler that we disassembled at the Red Rooster when we were stored in 2018. Now I've always been into steam engine projects and so I got them because first of all they look cool and I have an idea of making like artwork with odd industrial things but also I didn't know if maybe they could be useful for the steam engine project. Well, I'm thinking that might be a bit hopeful and they're just taking up a lot of room. So instead let's open them up and see what they even do and I might I might save just the interesting bits if I do a, an interesting like steampunk or whatever art project because I've been collecting things like water meters and some industrial stuff that might look pretty cool together but I can get rid of this section because that's stuff you can buy anywhere and I need to save space so what we have here number 150s pump control and low water cutoff maximum boiler pressure 150 psi pump and cutoff circuits ampere rating So this is pump control and low water cutoff, and this is just low water cutoff. So, it's interesting. Put the camera in like the worst spot possible for that. Seriously, I thought I already had it undone. It moved. Like, what else do I have to do? Apparently that. Ugh. The sunlight's getting a bit hot, so let's do it here. And this one, since I can't get it apart, I'll scrap this whole thing. Wow, I'm surprised that these come off so easily. Mm. 
Mm. I instantly know how this works now. Oh, it's a float. Wow. Whoa, that's a lot of that's a lot of clay and dirt in there. Hmm. Well darn, that is quite cool. Well, that's odd. How does that happen? Oh, there we go. So obviously this is upright and the water level lifts. So it's meant to always be like that. So if, if the water level gets too low, then it says, oh, there's a warrant, there's something wrong and it can turn the thing off. Like actual like metal in there so it's odd so much scale on here I'm forgetting my workshop and I can't remember where my screwdrivers were but something tells me I never really had them Bent the, bent the knife and got myself, but I'm not bleeding. This one's crunchy. So that's just like a, a switch, it just makes contact. What I'm most curious about is there must be a gasket in there, it's like a diaphragm. Oh. Holy cow, I just realized this is not a spring I'm looking at. This is one of those like stretchable metal fittings where it's like a radiator and it's a solid tube and that's what that is. Oh, of course, because there's no spring. It's just a series of like flanges and so there's no gasket in there. There's just that piece of copper that can move in and out. It can breathe in a way. It's almost like the elbows in a spacesuit. But that's brass. That's a solid piece of metal that is able to bend. Yeah, 
you could use this kind of thing like anything you need to have sealed but still have a mechanical motion through. For instance, imagine you were making a scanning electron microscope and you needed to be able to move something in the vacuum chamber. This would be perfect for that. As long as you make a good seal on this part, you're going to have a great seal on here. Now that's pretty cool. When I first looked at it, I just thought it was a spring, but of course, I've seen these before. I was trying to figure out I was trying to figure out what do I have that has that type of fitting and I realized in the magnesium and rocketry uh, drawer I have one. It's connected to my cryo cooler. My Peltier or no um Sterling Cycle cryo cooler. It's basically like a piece of duct work but because of that shape it can be adjusted or heat can make it expand and contract and it's perfectly fine. The first idea I have with this is that I can make a really, really complicated type of toilet that would be all steampunky. But this is how I would detect when the water was full or not. That would be a funny idea. Now we're on to the bigger one. Electrician, please note, disconnect power, oh, well, duh. Ooh. Now that I've taken apart the other one, I know more of what I'm looking at. First of all, these cables are just bugging the crap out of me. So here we have two switches. Oh, these are really nice switches. Okay, I'm definitely keeping the big one. I was already going to keep the small one now, but this one is really cool. And once again, we have another one. Looks like this one is stainless steel. But yeah, again, accordion. That's what I'm like. That's what the word I was looking for. Accordion. It's like an accordion mechanism. Come on, camera. It's an accordion mechanism. And you know what? I might as well go ahead and remove these too, so I can just scrap these. You know, I guess it actually could still work for the boiler project for the steam engine. So that also would work. Hmm. That's a bit dirtier. That's all the stuff that's in a boiler. Jeez. It's kind of cool. So this is basically the same mechanism as the uh, the smaller one, just just bigger, and with two switches instead of one. I just really like how that mechanism is. So that is how these boiler sensors work. 
Now the test is, do I remember how to put these back together correctly? Let's see. This one doesn't have anything in it, so this is obviously not supposed to have something in there. But it might be something left over from the manufacturing process. Jeez, my hands are dirty. Holy shit. Um, I like the idea of using this in something that actually works, not necessarily just like art, but using it in something that actually has an effect and uses it for what it is. Like the water meter, I wanted to maybe incorporate into like some hydropower thing. Oh, so you can put this either direction. It's kind of cool. Some of these little crunchy. God damn it. They're all just too crunchy. But they're not crunchy enough for the socket to actually go back sometimes because this wrench is a little stiff. I like how quick this is coming up. Uh, going, uh, coming apart and going back together goes very well. And that's that. Water level meters for boilers. Now that I've opened, opened them up and I see how foolproof they are, I really like them. I'm going to put them in the workshop now, next to my lathe, where I have all the industrial stuff. So, we'll save this for a future project or one of your projects. Either I'll find a use for it, or maybe a viewer will tell me they need it for something. But these will probably stick around for a few years. And I would like to know what you guys think I should do with these. What water level should I be measuring? There's some interesting things. Maybe, maybe I could do like a hydropower dam. I mean, finding a, a creek that you can do that with is the biggest issue. But that would be cool to have something like that to turn it on and off. Like to, to, to adjust the sluice gate or whatever. Hmm. We'll make a really fancy toilet. That'd be funny. Have like this big elaborate machine that it's just a toilet. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.